Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, and I'd like to introduce you to a new brush pack for Painter Essentials called Inking. This is a really lovely brush pack um, in terms of creating that kind of zen feeling to your paintings. I'm going to take you through all the brushes in the brush pack and give you some ideas on how to use them effectively. The first brush we're going to be looking at is called Blotch. Blotch is a speckle brush, a dynamic speckle brush, so we have the ability to do a few things with this brush when we're working with it. And one of those things is to actually change the speckle size of the brush. So this adjusts the size of that dynamic speckle. So at default, when I lay down some brush strokes, you can see how it kind of flies out and you can get this very, very highly textured effect. If I bring the speckle size down, it changes the brush and gives you a little more control of how it's applied. I like this brush for creating the look of pine trees, uh, tree branches, and textures in mountains. So it's one of the ways that you can use it. You can see in this original painting over here, I used it in certain areas just to give the look of foliage or undergrowth on top of the cherry blossoms. The next brush is called Fine Tip. This brush is a digital watercolor brush, so let me tell you a little bit about how you can work with this brush. The digital watercolor has the option to set diffusion of the brush stroke. So if I open up this flyout, you can see that there's a panel that opens and it allows me to set the diffusion. Higher diffusion values create brush strokes with softer edges and then you can also adjust the wet fringe which is available for digital watercolor brushes. We can also dry the digital paint on layers and then paint over those layers without affecting the diffusion. So let's go ahead and make a couple of brush strokes here and I'll show you how this works. So if I wanted this brush to have more diffusion I would set it to a higher setting and you can see as I make the brush stroke you can see how that brush stroke diffuses out from the edges. Now I can come back and I can dry that digital watercolor by selecting this little icon here and drying it and I can go back over those brush strokes and you'll notice that it doesn't affect the existing brush stroke so it doesn't add more diffusion to it. So it's a great way to work and gives you some opportunity to play with diffusion settings on a particular brush. If I reset the brush, you can see that the edges are fairly hard on this brush, so it would be a good brush for details. If I was looking to create the maybe trees or tree branches, I could certainly use it for that. Any kind of detail work. If I go over to the original image here, you can see that I used the detail to go in and paint in the pagoda and some of the surrounding mountains. Another thing that's important to note is this brush is based upon pressure. So if I put very fine pressure on the brush, you can see that I get a very, very fine, thin stroke. As I start to apply more pressure to the brush, you can see that the brush starts to get thicker. So soft pressure, thin line, more pressure, more saturation, and thicker line. You can also work with the paper panels and these brushes will apply paper texture as well. The next brush is called Flat Tip and this one is, um, I think, more of a calligraphy type of brush. So if you want to use it for creating text, it's a really great brush for that. It also is, is a good brush for just setting horizon lines and then you know, maybe putting your mountains in. Again, it has a diffusion setting, so if I wanted to set the diffusion higher, go back over a brush stroke, you can see how that beautiful diffusion takes place. And that brush is called Flat Pen.
The next brush is called Ink Diffuse. And this brush has a diffusion setting set into it already. So I'm going to change color here so you can see this. As I paint with this brush, you can see that it diffuses out on the edges. So it would be a good brush to use if you had, for example, let's go back to the fine tip and go ahead and make a brush stroke here. And say, for example, I wanted to make that edge feel like it had more diffusion to it. So I could go back to the ink diffuse brush and run that gently along the edge of that brush stroke and you can see how it diffuses out the edge. So that might be an effect that you were looking for. I did that a little bit in the mountains here where I went ahead and used the detail brush on the mountain and then went back over it with a diffusion brush to soften it. The next brush is called Ink Wash. And I like using this brush um, for traditional landscape painting too, not only um, more of the Sumier type work or ink work. Um, it's a very, very lovely brush for creating skies. So you can see that it's just a beautiful, beautiful, soft brush. If you use it with your shift key down, you can create these straight marks and create a nice gradient sky that way. It also is a watercolor brush, so we have that option to work with the wet fringe and diffusion settings too. So those edges can become even softer. So another beautiful brush. The next brush is called Noton. And I'm gonna work with black with this brush, bring the size up a little bit. And uh, this brush is a, a very expressive brush. Um, you would want to use it, um, I like using it for, you know, that Sumier type of work. Um, it's very good for creating the look of bamboo leaves or just short little leaves that you might want to put on trees, little dabs and things like that. Um, if I hold the shift key down, I can go straight down and create the look of maybe a bamboo frong here. And then I'll take the edges out and paint in the look of some bamboo leaves. So you can get very expressive with this. And that is called the Noton. The next brush is a scoring brush. And this one really, I, I li like this brush quite a bit. It has a grain setting, so it will work with watercolor paper and you can get some nice textures with that. Um, and it does have the watercolor option for diffusion and adjust adjusting the wet fringe and of course drying the paint. So this is a, um, I call this more of a utility brush. Uh, I used it a lot for uh, creating the basic shapes in here that I was painting into this piece. I'll kind of show you as I go over some of these little areas. Just a very soft and subtle diffusion that takes place on this brush. Really like this one. For detail work and just soft sketching. So you can see that I used it a lot right in this area to imply the look of buildings in the background. And that is score. Great brush. No inking set would be complete without a splatter brush. So the way I created this look of the um, cherry blossoms was that I used a splatter brush and I picked a nice pink color here. And uh, this brush is also set to pressure. So if you use um, very soft pressure, you can see that you're just gonna get a very soft look, kind of a textured effect. And the more pressure that you put on the brush, you can see how the brush starts to fly out and you get all this you know, lovely look. And this is exactly what I used here uh, to create the look of uh, cherry blossoms. So if, if I wanted to maybe add a few more in here, I could do that. So 
so it's a very lovely brush to use. That is a splatter brush. The next brush is called Spotty. And I'm going to take that color down to black. And in its default, we'll go ahead and reset this tool. It's a, a really nice brush for creating um, the look of kind of uh, Japanese ink uh, mountains. Um, because it is a speckle, a dynamic speckle brush, we can also change the size of the speckles to bring them down. So if you were looking for a little more control in that brush stroke, you could certainly use that brush to, uh, at a smaller size to create a little more control. So really, really fun for, for making those tall Japanese and Chinese ink painting mountains. Um, I can think of lots of other things that you could use this for, um, uh, creating tree trunks, uh, texture in mountains, uh, just general texture on a layer. And um, again, remember that this brush is a dynamic speckle, so you can definitely work with the size of that speckle as you lay down uh, the brush stroke. The next brush is called Zen. And this one, again, is a very uh, lovely brush for creating bamboo, bamboo leaves. It has a very expressive, inky uh, appeal. Um, I love working with this one. Um, uh, I could think of some other little things you could do with it. Um, you know, just a quick brush stroke. You can create the look of little minnows swimming, very expressive fish in the sea, different colors you certainly could use on different layers and work with different composite methods to create a real interesting effect. That gives you the look of swimming minnows. And of course it's beautiful for the look of bamboo. So if you were making bamboo leaves another nice brush for that effect. Okay, so this brush category is called inking for painter essentials and I hope you'll enjoy working with them. They're beautiful brushes to work with and I hope you'll have lots of fun with them. Take care.